right, it's time to chat about some of the more interesting stories of the day with Richard Southern, who's here in studio, live, in person, in color. Uh, let's start first with an interesting bylaw that went into effect in Toronto today, Richard. As of today, it is illegal to feed wildlife here in Toronto. Right. So no feeding the cute little squirrels. You oh, think they're cute? But they're so cute, though. Why yeah. wouldn't you want to give them a little nut or something? They're pretty cute. Yeah, uh, peanuts. This, um, even the, like the swans in Hyde Park or the birds, it, it's, you can't feed any wildlife or you could face a $350 fine. Oh, that's steep. And, you know, they say, and City Hall contends and the wildlife experts contend, Erica, that, you know, when you do feed the, the wildlife, you condition them to expect food from humans and that increases their proximity to humans. Also, human food generally not good right. for the animals. So are you in favor of this or not in favor of this, do you think? I mean, it does, people feed birds around my area and it's not great because the birds come around and then they carry all kinds of diseases yeah. sometimes. So yeah, maybe it's not a good idea it's to feed wildlife. It's going to be hard enforcing this. I mean, who's the cop that's going to charge the old lady feeding Honestly. the birds? You wouldn't want to be that guy. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, moving along. So we were all forced to isolate uh, for many months during the pandemic and it appears one country is not ready to start socializing again. Japan today mm -hmm. said that one and a half Half million of their citizens are, are shut-ins now. Oh, they're not leaving the house. Should I move to Japan? <laughs> <laughs> you were out here working during right, the pandemic. That's true. That's Credit true. to you, Erica. Uh, of course, many others were, were had to stay home, and, and that uh, really precipitated this problem that already existed in Japan pre-pandemic. They had a word for it. Uh, Hikikonori, I, I think it's pronounced, I probably butchered that, but it's, class, it's, it's defined as uh, those who withdraw from society, spending all or most of their time isolated at home. 2% of all individuals in Japan now are these type of shut-ins, uh, Erica. Japan didn't even enforce the same type of lockdowns we had here in Canada, but a yeah. lot of people did work from home anyways. You know, even for me, who did work at home quite a bit during the pandemic, it's still hard to, it's sometimes in social situations because right. you got out of practice doing I think that. a lot of people find it difficult now to, to be like we were before the pandemic. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, a four-year-old boy has written his way into the record books. What are we doing wrong? Honestly. You know? <laughs> Youngest published author ever, Erica, here he is, uh, wrote a book about uh, kindness and friendship and the Guinness World Record, uh, making note of uh, this young boy by the name of Saeed Rashid Almari, who was four days and 218 days old when he published his first book. You have to sell at least 1,000 copies to get in the Guinness World Record uh, books, which he did. I mean, maybe we should write our uh, great uh, novel. What do you think? Yeah, about kindness and love and friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? But congrats that to the young man. Very, very cute. I'm not a little boy. I, I would pre-order my Eric and Natividad autobiography at, at Indigo immediately if I heard that was coming out. For that, it's not going to be a, a bestseller. <laughs> Can I, I write the foreword? Sure. Okay, good. We'll Actually, I'll have to review that first. Okay, thanks, Richard. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Erica. <laughs>